Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today we're going to be playing more Disco Elysium. You might notice some things look weird. I don't know if you guys can even tell my hair looks bad. I This is a very rushed episode. Um, well, rushed to get into, but I have plenty of time to record. Anyway, basically it's towards the end of the day again. I know I said I wasn't gonna record at night and technically it's not at night, it's like 3.30. Yeah, wasn't planning on recording today, but towards the end of the day I started thinking, you know, I actually really want to play Disco Elysium. I haven't played it in a while and I just, I really, really want to play it because I miss it a lot. And I know the last episode was kind of weird. I don't know what was going on. And there are a few things that I wanted to address as well. Basically, as of recording this right now, I have only uploaded one episode, the first one. So that means a lot of the suggestions that you guys have put in episode one and two and all those have been sitting there, but I haven't been able to implement them into my gameplay yet. And that means there are a few things I want to address as well, which is, I know a lot of people are saying that I, that they don't really like my gameplay style for this game as far as um, the options that I'm choosing and how I'm choosing to be a cop. So this whole game is basically role playing what cop you would be. A lot of people are saying that I should be picking more exciting answers, or I should be playing a certain way, and I'm just sort of like, guys, I know it's not going to be exactly what everyone wanted. Um, that's the problem with multiple choice games is that everyone chooses a different answer, everyone wants me to choose a different answer. Personally, I'm just playing this game how I would like to play this game, and I understand that some of the dialogue trees aren't as funny or interesting if I do it that way, but I think that's more good for maybe a future live stream for this game where I just be a really like hard ass jerk who says random things at any occasion but that's not how I want to play this series. I think I just want to play it um, where I'm a good cop or sorry cop. <laughs> I just hit my microphone, sorry. But yeah, that's really how I want to approach it and I am sorry that it's not super interesting but at the same time. I want to have a good relationship with Kim, and I feel like if I'm just this asshole who says stupid things all the time, he's not gonna like me, and listen, I'm sensitive, okay? I really want him to like me, because <laughs> he's my favorite character, and I really like him, and I just see a potential- and I just see potential in their cop- lieutenant relationship here. The other thing was this game had a lot of bugs in the beginning that the developers have since fixed. Um, sadly, they have only fixed it recently where I've just recorded five episodes in total for this game and I was playing it with the glitches involved um, as far as like the characters not speaking their dialogue and I had to hop in and cover for them and uh, that didn't go as well. And I know it sounded bad and I'm so sorry, but luckily the developers got it fixed um, as soon as they could, I'm sure. Um, I'm really excited to see if it's um, super noticeable or anything. I heard they improved Kim's pathfinding, so hopefully he follows behind me a little bit better and it's not as wonky. That was a lot of speaking and I haven't even gotten to the recap, so well, let me just recap a little bit. <laughs> we did a lot last episode and I honestly couldn't tell you everything that we did. We met a racist lorry driver and uh, Kim was not having it and I tried to back him up as well as I could. That whole exchange was pretty funny and kind of sad. Uh, we also went into Fritz. Frit. I don't know how to say uh, the shop's name, but Fritz shop. And we spoke to the girl behind the counter who was no help at all. <laughs> Just trying to cover all my bases. I think we spoke to Kuno again and he offered us like a cool pair of pants, but I turned them down because they were too expensive and I have no money. We also went up to the harbor and the gates. The gates were closed, which sucks because we need to get in there and get someone's help so that someone can help us take down the body from the tree, which is our main goal basically. Oh, I'm sadly pretty sure I screwed that whole scenario up because we had to talk to the guy on top of the bridge and it wanted me to subscribe to his racist ideals in order to like communicate better with him or something. I don't know, but I didn't want to do that. So I basically opted out of that and so all that's left is to beat him up. And the dude's like seven feet tall, so that's not happening. <laughs> so yeah, I think I screwed that whole thing up. Uh, I, I don't know what to do at this point. I really don't know how to progress that part of the story, but I'm still gonna be looking around. I'm determined not to look up any walkthroughs because I'm scared of spoilers. And obviously, since this is pre-recorded, you guys aren't able to give me advice to help me out. So I'm just doing this on a whim 
and we'll see how it ends up. Like I said, we went to the harbor and we spoke to um, a very loud Scottish man who <laughs> was a leader of the scabs, uh, who I believe are people coming to Revishol to work, but are being basically locked out of the harbor and refused um, work. So they're very angry, and I honestly hope not to get involved with that whole drama. I don't know really how to progress that, um, or if we'll just be forced to be involved. I'm sure we will. There's also the lady that we spoke to, I think, in episode three. Maybe she has something to do with that. I'm not too sure. She might be able to help us out there, so if I get to it in this episode, I'll probably talk to her again and see what's up. But I also think it's getting kind of dark out, so we'll see if anything changes in day two. I'm still technically on day one, so... <laughs> and last but not least, we also spoke to Plaisance, who is the bookkeeper at her own shop, and her daughter Annette stands out front and lures people into the store. Lures people is the wrong word. Um, <laughs> talks about the store and asks people to come inside, basically. We just know that she's not a good mom because her poor daughter is outside all the time like a little worker with no pay. It's very sad. So I kind of dissed her parenting skills a little bit and she doesn't really like me. But we found out from Annette outside that the whole place is kind of cursed, essentially. There's a back room to the store where it's really shady and apparently there's like souls or ghosts in there, I don't know. We lied and pretend that we'd done stuff like this before in order to get to the back room and see what's up. I don't know where I'm going with it, but I think that's what I'm going to continue in this episode. I've spoken for way too long, so let's get back into this game because I'm very excited to continue. So yeah, let's not waste more time and let's get back into Disco Elysium. Okay, we're back and I'm still holding a, a bag of bottles in my hand. Hey girl, maybe I should take this, this bag out of my hand. Um, don't have enough skill points to level up, but that's okay. I wonder what happens if I remove my necktie. Wow. Because it talks to me. Yeah, don't take it off. Wait, I gotta put it back on. There we go. It's a horrible necktie. Oh my god, I just noticed Kim's face in my, <laughs> my pant leg. Hey dude. Oh, that was scary. I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, why is he here? Okay, I was supposed to get that bag out of my hand. Oh, it's over here. Okay, there we go. So let's equip the flashlight. Oh, wow. Oh, whoa! Whoa! Okay. That's crazy. Let's go. <laughs> let's go over here. And open this baby up see what's in here. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Pull the curtains open. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage-like trinkets, your shadow looming over it like an omen. A small, terrified, oh, escapes from her, from Plaisance as she tries her best to look away, her round face buried in her hands. Girl, it's all right. We're professionals. <laughs> we got this. I'm a little scared. <laughs> I wonder what's back here. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. Okay. Oh, ew. I mean, not ew, but... <laughs> What is it? Oh shoot. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. It's a little scary to just have it hanging in here, okay? I mean, he's killing it, but... <laughs> a heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Knock on the door. Unlock the door with the key. Pain threshold challenging, break down the door. I already have the key from her, so. But let's knock on it first. Only an echo. <laughs> no one is there. Why is it so scary? Unlock the door with the key. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Uh, Kim? Maybe you should go first. <laughs> Open the door and enter. Um... Maybe you should go first. No, I I don't know. I don't want to put him in danger. Let's let's go. 
oh shit <laughs> i just i vaporized i uh i'm not about i'm not about to put kim in danger okay i will kill i will kill for this man <laughs> um i am a little spooked Ooh. oh i have some it's a workout room what hello what is this place the lieutenant stares at the dusty training equipment it's an adventure it's another world Beyond the Veil. Looks like a gym to me. I think this may be the... Artem... Artemitips? How do you say... What is that? I don't know what that is. Boxing club for young athletes. It's an adventure! No, it's a gym. <laughs> Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. It's an adventure. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. An airy feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious here. What if there's a reason, though? Yes, because it's closed. <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> no need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? But dude... Gotta learn to live a little. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. Oh... Oh, it's upstairs. Okay. This is really interesting. Can I do some workout? Some, some workouts? This poster says, Sidious Fortis. The rest is worn off. Is that Latin? <laughs> I don't know. It's probably not. Worn out wall bars. They look unsafe. This looks like a jail. I don't know. Okay. I'm getting kind of stuck, though. There's a little kettlebell down there. Let's do some workouts. Let's pump some iron. <laughs> a barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars <laughs> on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. But dude. Why does it feel so familiar? Uh, what? <laughs> Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. Oh, I lift the barbell. Um, am I going to get hurt if I do that? Uh, is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. It's just a memory. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. Ah, uh, those were the days. Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. It's me for love. Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. Actually, I don't really care about safety hazards. Uh, it should be a it felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Let's lift it. <laughs> oh shit. Oh no, I'm gonna hurt myself. Oh shit. Oh. Okay, well. <laughs> you managed to hoist idea. it off the ground, but the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Damn it. Your hands slick with sweat. Turns out you're no beast, just an old man with bad form. See? See? This place is cursed. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, stupid barbell. <laughs> Seems like I'm a little out of shape, or maybe these gloves just suck. Oh yeah, I'm wearing gloves, so maybe that was why. Whatever, weightlifting is for the intellectually impaired anyway. <laughs> Say nothing. Uh, <sighs> Seems like I'm a little out of shape. Proper weightlifting gloves would definitely afford a better grip. Okay, let's leave. Now that I embarrass myself. Better not say anything, Kim. <laughs> what is that? Shot putt ball. Okay. What is that? A ball for playing shot putt. A favorite pastime of elderly gentlemen. You feel like you should hold on to this and make good use of it. To sell such beautiful old school sports equipment would be a sin. Oh, didn't we find some people playing that game? Uh, back in the... In the area, <laughs> like in the main 
outside of Whirling in Rags. I think we saw those dudes, so maybe they'd like it. It is kind of worth something, though, so maybe I should sell it. Okay, anyway. Ooh, what is going on? The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. Okay, this is kind of creepy. Thank him. Of course, I damaged my health, stupidly. I'm a little scared. <laughs> A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Is that how you say it? Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed in the mountain. Poor animals, no rest for their bodies after death. That must be my empathy. Oh, this is creepy. Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Kim, can you go first so I don't have to? Oh, nice. Whoa, Kim. Kim, are you okay? Oh my god, he's going crazy. A naked mannequin, mannequin torso. Strange yellow color. What is happening? I'm scared. Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. Is this Emma Atelier? Who's that? I forget. Nice, there's so much money here. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. Oh, she was the girl we met at the docks, I think. I think. What is that? Filament memory. Nope. What is it? Oh, it's worth 10 bucks! Production schedule, filament memory. The cube like crisscross of filaments feels oddly fragile in your hands. It's intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads, Production Schedule. No, this filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Oh, but better not sell it. I probably won't sell anything if I don't have to. Skis with sl slipstream printed on the l laminated top layer. Whoa. This place is creepy. Use it. Thank you. But where are the clothes if it's used to display? Good point. Whoa, what? Is that an elf? Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. This is very unexpected. <laughs> Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins, casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins, with organs shining under their skin. And even ether welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin. This is important. I don't care. Step back. Uh, examine it's it? It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his <laughs> face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them, Purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. The lieutenant can't help but comment. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. <laughs> Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Uh, why would anyone spend so much time on... Who are these creatures? Who this them? looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that. It looks like... 
a D and D project or something. Uh, why would anyone spend too much time on Some this? Some people really like building a world. I think, even if it's just for a game. One of them is a walk in supremacists. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard too. <laughs> the lieutenant nods at the Welkin's facial hair. Sure does. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on. Just from look the at those details. So much effort. And I know, right? All gone. Seriously, what's the point? Inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine. A much needed respite from our own world. It's like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> a pinned postcard reads The heat death scenario. A desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily minimi, and GPI span the marker drawn grid. The grand scheme of production and money. Everyone is constantly teetering on the edge of the abyss. An abyss of production. These squares look orderly, but beneath them is chaos, worry, pain. Minimi stands for a mini meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 <laughs> tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. Is that. Kim station or mine? I think it's mine. Keep reading. What happens? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothing. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, "See the prod schedule filament for details." Didn't I pick up that? Inspect the the handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. Let's leave. Wow, that was a lot. But don't I have the filament thing? Yeah. How do I inspect it? So I just opened this and I also just noticed my profile to the right, RCM officer profile, name unknown, rank unknown, superstar cop two, apocalypse cop two, sorry cop six, boring cop zero. At least I'm not boring cop, okay? At least I'm not boring cop. Communist one, fascist one, ultra liberal, liberal zero, moralist one. Okay. Good cop slash bad cop six. I don't know what the differences. Uh, honor one. People killed three. Cases solved 216, 18 years of service. Alright, we looked through that. Is there anything over here? Let's. Okay. I bet this. This appears to be to some kind that. of machine yeah. with a cube shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on off button a piece of paper still hangs from the printer a radio computer Set just sitting oh. <laughs> here without anyone inside he sounds surprised and a bit cautious yeah. this is the ream civic radio computer model rc5120 equipped with a felled mainframe and a ream compatible printer do you think i should turn it on we have one of these down at the station but i never really learned how to use it well, that doesn't really answer my question. <laughs> Turn on the machine. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment <laughs> is wide open. Look inside the compartment. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling. 
disconnected. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Insert the production schedule. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Oh boy. Uh, press play. Bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? I hope not. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Okay. <laughs> Kim, you gotta admit, this is pretty cool, man. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on Rue de Saint-Gazelaine. This is East Insulindian Rapid Station 1. Whoa. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? What? Is this a real person speaking? What is the production schedule? Why did you call me Fortress accident? What are you, a machine? Or are you alive? That's all for now. Uh, what is the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. You mean the glowing thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. A password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? Is it my birthday? This is police. Please open this thing. I don't know the password. I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Uh, what are you, a machine? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Yvonne. Her voice sounds so, like, fragile. Cute. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. The lieutenant whispers into your ear. Yvonne, my partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. Okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? Okay, but where are you? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian repeater station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. As for me, well... I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. Doesn't it get lonely, sitting there all by herself? Doesn't it get lonely doing this job? Lonely? <laughs> <laughs> Why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. She's so cute. That's why she does this. I guess. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for this accident. Why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with a studious care. Fortress Accident SCR produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalog says. Oh, wait a minute. Interactive call-in radio games. So that's what's written on the board there? That's not bad. Wow, so conceptual. And what's that, this interactive call-in radio game? Any other questions? Uh... Well, that's all for now. Thank you. And goodbye. The old lady's voice disappears along with the static. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Press print. Nothing happens. Damn it. Remove the production the schedule. slides out of its glowing nest. Okay. I'm just taking it out in case I, I lose it. Like, I I'd rather have it with me. That was crazy. I don't- I still am so confused at what this place is, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty intrigued. This whole thing is really cool. Scribbled across the notebook, developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Wow, so it is like a game. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. 
The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. Hold on, how do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes. Students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. So we're dealing with something medical here? This must be an elaborate piece of art, of course. The an anatomy of the curse. <laughs> Perhaps. The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. They must have had massive air width. These things don't come cheap. Wait, who's the Game Master? If it is a game, then who's playing? Uh... Who's the Game Master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. If it's so massive, where is everyone? It looks like this whole place is abandoned. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. If it is a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. All of this is gone, left unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My hmm. god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Mm-hmm. The cost of airworth alone must have been huge. Exactly. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. He nods at the calendar on the chalkboard, wiping his marker stained fingers clean against his jacket. What else? Squint at the lines. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. This is so cool. It's so cool. Oh, let me talk to you. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Someone tried to exercise the curse using technology. Looks like an undercover counterintelligence program. It's just a failed business. Only question is, what the hell were they making? Uh... Doesn't seem like it. It seems like an undercover counterintelligence program. Because the thing is, like, had the SCA logo in here. Maybe the whole board, well, is like a cover up for them. So obviously this, uh, this stuff is very advanced. I'm gonna say this. <laughs> no, that's Shit. not it. I think. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory. <laughs> Crafted together like a puzzle box. Okay, go ahead. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks, as a compliment. <laughs> How are they planning to do that? Has anyone ever done this before? And this was a role playing game? What do you think could have happened to the company? Wow. <laughs> That's it. Uh, how are they planning to do that? Through call in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller calling stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. I'm not seeing any evidence of a curse, you know? Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people. Possibly divided into sub frequencies. That's why I thought it was part of the um, that company. But has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Königstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. Right. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an interisolary game before. 
We just don't have the technology. And this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. <laughs> the world looks like a modified version of the WeWorld board game, with hit death thrown in. True. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is <laughs> too good to be left unfinished. Right? What do you think happened to the company? I wonder if this is all just <laughs> a ruse by the developers being like, this is a spin-off game <laughs> or something. I don't know. Probably not. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. <clears throat> they stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... The lieutenant tilts his head, thinking. They were insane if they thought they could do this. It was just a play to cheat money out of their investors' pockets. The curse got them. I see no other, no other explanation. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep the... Keep it company let's finish it do we have any money let's give them even more money so they can finish it and make it even bigger uh let's finish it it's too late for that i'm afraid <laughs> a half smile breaks out on his face it's too late for that he says looking around the derelict room the pipes howl and the and a rat crosses the floor okay let's keep moving man but i wanted to finish it <laughs> do you imagine that would be some side quest. Oh wow, I'm so close to getting another skill point. Hell yeah. Oh. Oh shoot, maybe I should go back. There was another place I could have gone. I am so hungry right now. Oh, whoa. Actually, you know what? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back over here because I missed this part. Oh wait, shit. Is this where I came from? Oh no, it's not. Oh, what is this place? This is kind of scary. <laughs> what is this? An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. This must be where the entity lives. Let's knock on it. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Knock on it harder. Still nothing. Knock no on one's it. home. Even harder. Those curtains prove oh. to be surprisingly sturdy. Your fist <laughs> hurts now. Shit. If this is really an entrance to the chimney, then there must be a furnace somewhere as well. Maybe there's another way to get in. Can you please try to refrain <laughs> from attacking random things? I need to find the mal malignant entity, Kim. This is the chimney. This is not random. This is significant. I want to see what's on the other side. I can try. Blow gently on your bruised knuckles. <sighs> I can try. Thanks. <laughs> in any case, there's no way we can get in right now. Let's investigate further. Okay. Should I heal myself? I don't know. Oh. A Delta 51. What's that? Eh. Eh. What is this? Postcard, La Delta 51. The sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia tone. Midtown traffic passes, overheated, overhead, the ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into a beige midday mist. Vapor rising from the delta on which the district was built. The postcard is prepaid. I was thinking, I was like, what if it's the password? And then, yeah, probably not. She was in a puddle of melting snow. Wait, what? So they're recently placed here? Because the snow would be melting. Obviously, someone's still trying to get through that door. I don't know if I should heal or not, because if I get hurt one more time, I'm going to freaking die. Uh, <laughs> need to, um,. Need to upgrade my health more, I think. <laughs> okay. Let's go through here. I don't know if anyone's been hearing my stomach this episode. <laughs> but god, I'm so hungry. Let's heal. There we go. I healed one time because, you know what? If I die, I'd be real sad. Ooh, some money. Magnesium, nice. 
Are we on top of a roof? The wind howls from the co coal chute above. Where are we? Look at that giant scary statue. What the hell is going on? What? You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Let's crack it open. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. <laughs> Relax, Kim. It's a fridge. Look inside the refrigerator. Uh... Just look inside. I want him to be vigilant, honestly. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note from the door. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers in there. That's what I would do. What is this giant bear-shaped fridge doing in, the abandoned, in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. Lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He, he studies it in the light. So they tried to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. <laughs> what is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The lieutenant points at the red snaky cable running from the fridge. Yeah, good point. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. <laughs> Take the note from the door. You pocket the note. And the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Nice. You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further by uh, going to the interact tab in your inventory. Okay, thank you, tutorial agent. Uh, <laughs> um, examine one of the ice cream wrappers in there. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. Close the door. Well then, let's look at that note real quick. See what this is about. Handwritten note from the fridge. A handwritten note you found from that giant ice bear fridge. It still bears some marks from the fruit-shaped kitchen magnets that they were used to secure it to the refrigerator door. Don't have those magnets though. I'm sad. Okay. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? The lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. I will say it again, I've said it before. Kim is adorable and I love him. Read the note. Someone has scribbled. S, I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio. So I had to hide it somewhere safe. Kuno. You'll find the oh. filament memory with the offsite copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswaf. <laughs> this is crazy. Look, uh, I wonder who wrote that note. Remind me again, what is a filament memory? Is that what's in Kim's camera? Last night, copying the frozen ice cream maker. Who's the illiterate ginger kid? I think I know who that is. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? Uh, I wonder who wrote that note. Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. Maybe it's because of the entity. Guess we'll never know. Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. That's a plausible hypothesis. Thank you. What's a film of memory? It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like oh. a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. It's like the production schedule you found. Right, okay. That. Only this one's an off-site copy. Okay, I was wrong. Uh, we already know who it is, but I'll just really? say Really? You don't have a single guess? <laughs> Lieutenant looks at you. The corner of his mouth curved into a smug grin. 
You mean Kuno? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. <laughs> Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. Yeah, sounds about right. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Okay. Interesting. This I love this whole side quest that we're doing. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm having a great time. I hope you guys are. I'm just saying. It's 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 been a lot of fun. Alright, uh what's this? This whole area is crazy. What is this place? I keep forgetting I can zoom out. An ice cream maker, defrosted and plugged. Oh, well, there it is. Oh. Flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. Oh shit. Alright, well, let's look at that in a bit. Another ice cream maker, I think. Frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Yeah, people are still around because they're paying the electricity bill. What's that? Nasa fed. Okay. Nice. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Let's leave those for right now. Ooh, insane mesh tank top. <laughs> what now? Where'd you even get that one? No, really. Who put it in that drawer? No further comments. Wear it at your own risk. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck is that? That is horrible. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh. Oh, it's so bad. Oh. Well, okay, let's put on some my clothes again. Thank you. <laughs> oh god. Intercom wires running into the breaker box. Okay, don't go there yet. I'm pretty sure that leads out. It's down here. Money! Dude, I'm rolling in cash. <laughs> Cellar window. People's feet shuffling on by the street. Oh. I wonder where this leads out. I wonder if there's people who haven't even seen this part of the game. Like, is this all optional? I don't know. The wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. I can't really see the face. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Look inside the furnace, smear your hands with coal, kick it with your foot. How about I smear my hands with A lush <laughs> layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karzai, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. Hadramut Karzai, smear your, <laughs> smear your cheeks black with coal. Now let's not express ourselves, let's just wipe our hands clean on our pants. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll give me some sort of bonus or something. Let's just Three do it. dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks. Telling stories of your wild soul. What? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm the reincarnation of the ancient Ilamaran warrior. <laughs> Nothing. Wipe your face clean. Sorry, that was stupid. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> Damn it. See, I want him to like me, but I want to do funny stuff at the same time. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Oh, look inside. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. What are you doing? Lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. I'm hallucinating. Or maybe it's the entity. I hear the murderer of the hanged man talking. I'm not sure, Kim, but I think I can hear someone upstairs. Wait, really? He looks maybe up. it's coming oh. from behind the safety curtains we saw upstairs. Yeah. 
those voices I heard. Maybe it's a malignant entity. Plaisant said it lives in the chimney. Yell hello into the furnace. Uh, let's try it. You must Damn hold it. your strength and yell. <coughs> your dehydrated, hungover throat can Shit. produce little more than a dry croak. A lifetime of smoking and drinking will do that to you. Sure will. The chatter from the chimney continues on as before. You seem to have made no impression on whatever's up there. Then again, maybe it's worth actually trying something up there. Hmm. Maybe you should let your voice rest, officer. Try again later. Damn. <coughs> I love the perfectly timed voice crack on that one. Those voices I heard. Uh, Paisansa said it lives in the chimney. You're right. The rooms do look like they're connected. But malignant entities don't exist. At least not the supernatural kind. Always has to be the skeptic, this man. Let's just leave. I, if I kick it with my foot, I'm gonna hurt my foot again. So, should I, like, unplug those wires? I'm gonna leave them for right now. And let's see what's up with this secret room here. Okay, I can't. I can't. Okay, whoa. There we go. There we go. Whoa. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Whoa. A few me, bricks Kim. have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Look around the secret room. Look, there's a hole in the wall. Shine light in the hidden compartment. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? No, you do the honors. Back off. Uh, okay, I do. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spiderwebs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim? Are these any good? Inspect the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine wood stock, in better cosmetic order than the others. Take it. You're a police officer. Police officers carry guns. Yeah, now those people back at the station can't make fun of me. This one looks nice. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. What does this mean? A rifle here. Uh, where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. <laughs> cache. What does this mean? A rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. <laughs> Let's leave. Okay. Uh, I think we got everything from there. So now... Oh god, I'm stuck. Ugh, okay. Let's look and see. Ugh, I have- I need five more skill points. Or, uh, yeah. Dang. Antique Bell Magrav rifle. I'm surprised it's not worth more. From ages past. It's a four-shot bolt-action military rifle with a wooden frame. So, apparently there's people talking upstairs. I don't know what to do about that. Let's um, Let's just unplug everything. Two cables up Unplug the an giant electric red sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. Unplug the black cable. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? <laughs> it's black. It's not like it's the red one. Because it's black, the color of a measurable cosmos. I don't know why I unplugged it. I do things without any reason. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. Uh... Let's plug them both Somewhere back in. in the dark. Somewhere, a machine hums along there with the go. current. Okay, uh... Do, what's up here? Oh! We're let out here! <laughs> okay... That's interesting. An 
old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. So, substream C, S C A. Let's try this again. No, Damn hold it. on. The last thing you need in your life is more hysteric emotions. Forget it. Find something else to do. Fine. Looks a little darker out. <laughs> Let me just point this flashlight right in your face, Kim. Uh, actually, let's take my flashlight out of my hands. There. Hello again, officer. What is How this fuck the, fuck the police business? Excuse me? She doesn't understand. She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. The street sign says fuck the police. Point to it. Oh. Well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. What about the other side? Pigs go home. Who are these pigs? It's alright, I didn't mean to startle you. Okay. Her shoulder's relaxing. Okay. Sorry. I didn't know if there'd be anything that I'm missing here. Inside, you see a set of okay. Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. How may I assist you? Uh, have you heard back from ICP about the serial number? No. And I doubt they'll get back to me before tomorrow morning. Anything else? 57, no. over and out. In the cabin, you see okay. a set of steering Did I already do this? Tap on the field for heater gauge. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch, labeled heat. Now, now, that's enough fun with the foldable headlights. Mm -hmm. I know they are mesmerizing. They are also fragile. I'm not going to turn it on for you again. Okay, fine. Okay. Um. So, did I do anything <laughs> down there? Can I talk to? Play songs? Hey, girl. Hello, sir. How is the investigation going? Found any curses yet? Yeah, I found a way into the Doom commercial area. Oh, that's great! I hope exciting adventures lie ahead. And maybe you can help Mother become less afraid. Okay, bye. See you around, Annette. Uh, let's see if she tells me anything new. Hey, girl. So, uh, you got quite the thing in your basement. You're alive and well! Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? In that dark sarcophagus? Dark sarcophagus. Pause dramatically. Yes, yes. How was it? It was a charnel house of failed business enterprises, leeching life energy from this bookstair. bookstore. Honestly, a dump. Nothing to see there, just heaps of garbage, so much to let the sun shine in. I'm in no position to give out personal opinions. Uh, it was failed business. I knew it! Oh, such horrors that have been thrust upon us! She shakes her but head. What else did you find? Did anything survive? No, of course not. Have you located the entity? You don't have anything of substance to tell her until you found that entity of hers. Okay. Well, I can't really say anything, I guess. But you know what I will do? Is I'm gonna buy that map. <laughs> Looks like Guillaume Le Mion. Nope. Hair poster. Okay. Anyway. Uh, I wanted to buy the map here. Let's buy this. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda. A map okay. of... Buy it. good to be informed of your surroundings. Look at the map of Insulina. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is La Caillou. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile de Fantôme, Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands. All just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou. 
in a bookstore. It's you. Mm. Squint first. Can you see the cities on the islands? You can. On Caillou, Rivershaw, a single black star. On Ozon, Fondelier, and Vimandu. On Archipelagos, Croyan Moran, Villiers. On Seminine, Aldivai, and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. Yeah, I hope you guys don't expect me to be able to pronounce any of those words. Lost little pearls of light, tiny fires in the dark. 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. Look at the edges. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the north azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. Samara is the East Azimuth. Seo is the West Azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Seo is where Kim is from, I think. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Inselindian. Unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars. Gods. But looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are. The Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you, and very, very far away. Perhaps they are gods, gods of distance and outer dust. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so does that mean I have a map now? Interact. Yeah. A worn and torn map of the Martinez area, dating from 48. A title on top reads, Bienvenue? Uh, Ravachol? It's a bit out of date, as it was originally created by a design studio in a failed attempt to spruce up Martinez and turn it into a fancy tourist location. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. <laughs> Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. Trace a path through the Your grid. finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de saint Ghislaine and Rue saint sipa over saint Brune and Martinez North. Finally, come into a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. For a more detailed view of the map, go to your journal and okay. click... <laughs> Thank you. Map. Whoa. That's crazy. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Oh, that's just such a... Okay, that makes so much sense. Martinez Waterfront. Oh, look at the harbor. Okay. So we go down. There must be so much I'm missing here to the south. There's a whole Ferris wheel. What the heck? What have I been doing this whole game? <laughs> what? Okay, we gotta get exploring some. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's get out of here. What am I been doing, man? Lady, I will talk to you later. I'm sure we'll be able to find that entity soon. I could have sworn I tried to explore more areas than that. I don't... Unless the map is just really, really outdated, but maybe I just really haven't been looking anywhere. <laughs> Shit. Oh my God, I'd feel so bad if there's a whole part of the map that I haven't even... Yeah, I think there is. That would make sense. <laughs> Shit. I'm on episode 6 and I haven't done anything. And guys, I'm so sorry. This is gonna be a long ass series. Oh, okay. Let's walk around. Sit down here. Guys, excuse me. Spirited chirps and clicks of swallows fill the air. Excuse me, Kim. Terry tracks leading in onto the roof. The slush and rain has almost washed them off. Okay. Where am I? Whoa, okay. It's kind of hard to walk over here. An ancient fountain. It doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Oh. What's this? Close! 
Oh my god, there's so much over here that I haven't even looked at. There are clothes oh no. inside. Cheap second-hand clothes. Smelling of strangers' body odors. Hey dude, I hope you don't make me look into your stuff. Don't be shy. These are oh. premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics. Best retro design. Save the economy with your style, officer. How about some premium class service over here? Like paying with net worth. Go over and ask him if you can do that. <laughs> Save the economy. That sounds off. Save the economy? What are you talking about? Browse to the you box. Find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand. Buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. Uh, find something worth salvaging from the pile of rags. Something cold Yay. raises your hand. Synthetic and sleek. A windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind. Summer, 100% waterproof. And sport. All in different typefaces. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. <laughs> Sure, let's buy the windbreaker. Gotta prepare for springtime, right? Street vendor seems pleased. Save the economy, what are you talking Haven't about? Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash, keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Why exactly does the economy need saving? Thanks for advice. I'll try to be more economically conscious. Very conscious. Cool. The economy thanks you, officer. Okay, well, now I get to put on my new windbreaker that I didn't get to see. Oh my god. <laughs> Keep your cool. This nylon wind cheater is so dynamic it wraps around you like a membrane. Equipped with a stowable hood, the backside of the garment is covered in sport and summer related text. It switches softly as you swishes softly as you walk. That's amazing. Let's talk off, take off my gloves though. I don't think I really need them. Nice. Damn, don't I look great, Kim? You keep coming back. That's good, officer. Keep browsing <laughs> those clothes, keep saving that economy. If he really wants to save the economy, he'd let you pay with net worth. Go over and ask him if you can. No. Uh, what you got here? You see two lowly, defeated speakers, thralls, Slaves, basically. Perched atop them like conquerors surveying the land. A pair of found, durable wear sneakers. Ultra serious. I can see you've a taste for luxury, officer. Can't keep your eyes off those sneakers? Speaking of luxury, you should go over and ask about paying for those sneakers with your net worth. <laughs> Inspect the sneakers. A pair of found ultras. The design is impossibly sleek and simple. A futuristic silhouette with a sleek monochrome colorway, a jet black upper, and a silver lined midsole. Those sneakers, mister. Those sneakers are the latest found sneakers. Super air, super fine, super cool. Only 50 real. Only? Wow. That's madness. Inspect the speakers. These once respectable speakers have been conquered, reduced to a mere prop by the indomitable found ultras atop them. No, no, don't look at the speakers, officer. Look at the sneakers. The sneakers are the stars here. <laughs> Poor little speakers, bat them. But I, lo I already looked at the sneakers. What about those speakers, though? Do doesn't anyone want those speakers? Uh, Poor little speakers. No, don't pity them, officer. These are old Samaran garbage. Don't even look at them. Check out these super cool, fun ultras instead. He definitely wants to keep his speakers. Samaran trash. That sounds like they're from the Samaran People's Republic, produced under the dictatorship of the proletariat. Can I just buy the sad, conquered Samaran speakers? No way, officer! <laughs> these aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Low fi socialist junk. But I need some speakers. Well,. If you want them... He pauses for a moment, calculating. But see, they are the pedestal for my sneakers. If I let go of the speakers, 
Where will the sneakers go? I can't leave premium lifestyle sneakers on the ground. If, on the other hand, you wanted to buy the sneakers too, I could maybe throw in the speakers for little extra. 50 cents? Buy. So I can't get the speakers unless I buy the sneakers. That's so annoying. Okay, fine. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. The vendor takes a pair of sunglasses and sticks them under your nose. Stylish shades, huh? They'd be even more stylish if you paid for them with net worth. Go over and ask him. Let's just leave for now, okay? <laughs> we got a lot more to look at. We can't be stuck with that guy. So... Oh, whoa. Sewer gate, a gateway to the river of filth. It's over here. There's so much. Oh my god, there's so much I missed. I'm so upset that you guys have waited this long and this far into the series. A helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. Oh. Hot air rises from the sewer. Sour, acidic, and strangely comforting. Ew. Seems like I can't go over here. Whoa. <laughs> What's up here? Can't get in that thing. Damn, okay. Let's go over here. Another trash compactor? Oh, fingerless gloves, nice. Let's see. Oh, cigarette stained fingertips. Gasoline stained fingertips fingerless gloves in navy blue. They've been worn threadbare, but being made of wool still provides some warmth and comfort. <laughs> nice. Not sure if this is a professional look for a detective, but you know. Here I am. Roy's Pawn Shop. Fast cash for faster times. Oh, that must be where I can sell stuff. Nice. Okay. Take a look at that in a second. What's that? Butter sign down. <laughs> Samaritan butter. People really hate them, huh? Who are you? Is that the racist lorry even driver? Lorry, lorry driver, whatever. Evening officers. Oh no. Man on water lock. Do you have a knife in your hand? <laughs> a burly man hangs oh. out by the water lock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the water lock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. First things first, what are you doing here, man on the water lock? Do you know what caused this wreckage? Point to the smash billboard. Uh, who are you? My friend Barry the Butcher is stuck on the other side of the water lock. Oh shit, hey. I'm keeping him <laughs> company and eating his salami. <laughs> From the corner of your eye, you see a man in a yellow shirt and grey overalls waving at you from across the canal. He seems disappointed about the wreckage on the water lock and the salami. His poor salami. Aww. Very good stuff. <laughs> Anything I can do for you, officer? The man on the water lock picks the skin off a slice of salami and takes a sizable bite. Do you know what caused this wreckage? Point to the smashed billboard on the canal. I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershell. The words daredevil driver sound ominous to you. <laughs> Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here, especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Do you know what's further down the coast? Can I have some of that salami? Point to this food. Can I have some? Sure thing. He cuts off a slice of Want salami. Want some too, officer? <laughs> he turns to the lieutenant. Why not? Oh. The lieutenant ponders for off the offer for a moment, then decides to go for it. He takes a slice of salami from the man and chews on it. <laughs> I didn't think he'd take it, but that's that's great. You know what's further down the coast? Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. He thinks for a moment. Yeah, not really much else. 
Just bombed out ruins. Right. Bye. Okay, then. I hope we can get his friend Waterlock out of order until Wednesday at 7.15 a.m. Interesting. It's not really anything else I can do. Okay. Let's go inside the pawn shop. Why not? Now that I'm filled up on salami. <laughs> going on here <laughs> what okay hello some kind of machine an antique cash register what is going on sorry for any background noise you guys might hear this episode uh, let's see bust of a woman the, pl the plaque simply says DEI in the dark a film projector is whirling away whirring away Little figurines. You see rows of toy soldiers <laughs> guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Try to find something pretty and cool here, then use it to win her back. <laughs> win her back? Inspect the knights on horseback. Inspect the blue uniforms, inspect the figurines and rags. Dig up a truly cool figurine in the box under the table. Step away for it right now. If you want to talk to that guy who's just chilling there. Mostly military wear, a few more eccentric fashions thrown in. A typical Martinez streetlight sits <laughs> among assorted floor and table lamps. Let your gaze run over the streetlight. The light pole has been carefully cut. And the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but persistently. This would make quite a statement in your living room. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello, sir. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. The man at the counter turns to you slowly. What can I do for you? Yeah. His courtesy is not insincere. But he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. I'm so confused. I'm a little scared. Sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting you. Shake your head. It's shameful how insufficient the police presence is in these parts. Now that the RCM is here, tell me, have you had any trouble lately? I haven't had any problems myself, though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. This guy's creepy. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Quite the collection indeed. Look around, typical, vicious, consumerist, objects but I don't know how to say that honestly I think some of your selections are more tasteful than others this business plan is all over the place you should specialize zoom in recapitalize um no, let's not insult him <laughs> it keeps me entertained his attention is drawn once more to the plate of light and shadow on the walls behind he's him. well composed but underneath it you sense psychedelic processes bubbling some kind of drug maybe entertained he might be high if he is on what uh there's something i'd like to sell uh is roy high if yes then uh, then what is he on he might be able to aid our investigation by the way do you happen to have any guns like the ones carried by officers of the citizens militia um Hmm. Let's try to see what he's on. Feeling warm and enthralled oh. by the movement of light, 
while the mine continues to race forward. Lucky bastard, he's probably on Parolidon. It's tough to come by on the street. Parolidon, what's that? A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects and it makes your eyes turn yellow. That's why he's wearing sunglasses. Is it just me or is it really warm in here? Look around. Step closer. Sir, could you take off your sunglasses? I'd like to check your eyes. Get straight to the point. So where does a man get parola down these days? So, uh, I don't know. Let's just go straight to the point. How would I know? Takes a step back, studying you. There's a note of indignation in his voice. Interesting. It's pretty obvious that you're under the influence, sir. No judgment, just curious. I probably did loads of Perilodon before I lost my memory. Chill out, man. I'm chill cop who just wants some of what you're having. Ugh, I don't know how to flay this guy. No judgments, just curious. I've had to take it. You know, since the people's pile cleaner. I was with the emergency relief brigade. He's taken it for mental and emotional, not physical pain these days. Huh. He's taking it then got addicted, I guess? The people's pile? What's that? Tell me more of this emergency relief brigade you are part of. Must have been tough. Radioactive cleanup. How did you end up running a pawn shop? Uh, people's pile. What's that? A bad idea. Some poor leftist built a particle decay generator in hopes of bringing affordable electricity to underserved communities. It malfunctioned. Radioactive waste everywhere. Probably some of it in you, too. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. Tell me more about this emergency relief brigade. We were an all-volunteer force. Self-organized. Tried to help the fire brigades contain the spill. I lived by the river since I was a small boy. The Esperance didn't have the art to let it all go to shit without trying to do something to help out. There wasn't much the volunteer force could do, however. We wasted years in the river mud. Years getting sick. He looks at the spiraling light and stops. Must have been tough, radioactive cleanup. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened. And why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment. And early deaths. Cancer, mostly. And we knew all that was coming, even as we were cleaning up as best we could. Whose fault was it that the generator failed? No one's. Everyone's. He sighs and shakes his head. So much bitterness. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor, hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? How did you end up running a pawn shop? The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later, my second aunt died. Left me this shack and all the assorted junk in it. Oh. So I came to Martinez. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. I said, people, we just had a nuclear pile meltdown. I'm gonna get as far away from Forberg as I can. Still in the same city, but... Thank you for telling me. I like the theory more than the story. Ooh. Outward movement, not vortices. Yeah, you gotta get in on those vortices, my man. <laughs> Care to share your parola down with me? Uh, no, thank you. Um, hmm. Something I'd like to Let sell. Let me have a look. Oh, I don't want to sell the photo. I'll check my pockets, access your pawn menu. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Uh. I don't want to sell his handkerchief. I don't want to sell his pen. I don't want to sell this. No. I have a fascinating photo of a corpse here. Oh, no. I don't like those kinds of objects. No sale. Do you know what the tattoos mean? Aphotic paths. Counter-radiance networks. Anti-magnetism. 
It's darkness. That's all I know. Sell me something lighter. You have absolutely no idea what aphotic baths are, but the tattoos on the men are not that. I don't have anything to sell at the moment. Another time, perhaps. Okay. We might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. You know anything about the recent hanging? Think you could help me get a corpse out of a tree? Actually, that's all I got. Uh, know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. Think you could help me get a corpse out of a tree? The corpse behind the hostel, I show. I don't have a truck with a mounted platform or anything of that sort myself. Ask around the harbor. There might be some workers there who'd be willing to help. That's exactly what I was afraid of. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. By the way, do you happen to have any guns like the ones carried by officers of the citizens militia? Maybe someone sold my gun. Who knows? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you what? pawned a couple days back. The lieutenant shifts from <sighs> one foot to another, alert. Wait, what? Wait, I sold you my gun? Was the buyer a policeman too? At least now I know how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something else. Wait, I sold you my gun? You... Uh... We've came here too. That just sounded really, really bad. Uh... You were adamant about getting rid of it, <laughs> officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the River Shoals Citizens Militia. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts, photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. He probably has a good reason for that. Drop the matter. Feels like there's something you're not telling me. You weren't quiet. Yourself, officer. What was I like? You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and that you can't trust yourself with it tonight, and that you need the money. So I was very suicidal. When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. <laughs> then I agreed to take it. Very normal behavior. You must have been in great shape. Wait, how much did I sell the gun for? Happens to the best of us, I guess. I really should have killed myself. Maybe I still will one of these days. Eh. I'm so sorry you had to see me in that state. We don't have to talk about it any further. Uh, say nothing. The light swells in his face and glasses. He doesn't know what to say either. Was the buyer a policeman too? She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig. Which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit... Obsessive, but I was just happy to get rid of it and of her. Was it that girl, Kuno S? Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizen's militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? <laughs> Miraculously, his face does not reveal what's happening inside. There's only one explanation. She must be one of my rabid fans. Maybe she's a vigilante, wants me to prove wants to prove she can do our jobs better than we can. I don't like it either. What if she intends to commit a crime and blame it on the citizens militia? I'm sorry, I'm sorry I sold my gun. <laughs> no, I don't like it either. You're right that she could cast aspersions on the force. We have to find out. Any idea where I can find this buyer? My apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she was coming from or where she went. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. At least I know how I lost my sidearm. Of course. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh god. Let's leave and talk to Kuno S. Cause I wonder if she's the girl. Cause she refers to cops as pigs, so. It's worth a shot. 
Okay, let's use that skill point though, real quick. Uh, let's see here. Let's upgrade my pain threshold. So that I'm able to withstand pain more. Yeah. Alright. Sounds good to me. Okay, now let's talk to the girl. Because I have a feeling it's her. And now she's just running around with a gun. That's not good. The way I'm running. Did I always run like that? Okay. Hey, girl. I'll die before I squeal, pig. Listen, child, the smell is so bad that I threw up, and I was wondering. <laughs> Stay away from me, pig! You don't want to see what happens when you corner me. I need to go to around the other side and talk to her. Hey. Fuck, does Kuno care? Let's try this one more time. It's not Kuno. Oh. It's Kuno S. Uh, interesting. How? Act on it and try and separate them. Kuno. Psst. Uh, how? Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something, something very bad. That's what I'm thinking too. Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you, even enjoys it from time to time. When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a cornered animal. She only hisses and says murder was the case that they gave her. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with them alone. Act on it and try and separate them. Fuck you whispering about! He whispers back. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Is he gonna punch me in the face or something? Fuck you f whispering about! She puts extra stress onto that word, expecting it will make you uncomfortable. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. Okay. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Oh, God. Uh, Kuno, listen to me. She's trying to control you. We gotta get you out of here. What's up with her? She's terrifying. Crazy scary. Oh, I'm glad she's out of her hair. She's fucked up. Don't make him look bad. If I say this one, he might think that, like, I'm saying he's weak enough to be controlled. I don't, I don't know. I'm glad she's out of her hair. She's not fucked up. Shit. Everyone's fucked up. Stop judging shit. Wrong move. Shit. But he's whispering still. You haven't lost him. Just don't mess up again. Or you will. <sighs> there are no guarantees here. That's a 50-50 shot. Oh, God. Listen to me, she's trying to control you. It's okay. The pig's trying to pit us against each other. Not gonna let him do that. That's it. Shit. You let him off the line. That was a bad, manipulative <laughs> thing to say. You should understand. Shit. I got you this far. I couldn't get you all the way. Try to fuck my kuno! <laughs> Try to fuck my kuno away! Me and Kuno are tight. We ride for life. Oh, God. Try it again. <laughs> What's going on? Fuck. Is an ungovernable youth on your crime scene <sighs> thrown around incendiary language, trying to push your buttons? Like you don't have enough on Damn your it. plate. You feel a sudden surge of self-pity coming on. <sighs> Damn it. I keep screwing everything up. You know, listen, I know this boundary pushing thing is new to you, but it's old news for us grown ups. You know, you must have seen all kinds of things throwing stones here. Want to help the RCM bust a murderer? I don't know what to do anymore. I'm just a busted old piece of meat. This case is all I have, and you're not helping. Uh. 
Must have seen all things here. Fuck no! <laughs> what are you, fucking mentally handicapped? Kuno, they've almost made you a snitch now. Ease off, see. Kuno always takes the bullet over the hammer. He nods, big boy style, incredibly proud of himself. He'd rather die than work with the justice system. Kuno <sighs> doesn't fucking care. Fuck. Screwed it up. I feel so bad. But there really was no way to tell which one to do. I don't I don't know. Oh boy. Did I look at this? You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza. I didn't look at this. Why am I looking at this? What kind of vehicle drove you here? Reconstruct the movement. Uh why am I looking at Cop this? Cop habit. You look at everything. This isn't case related, you think. What kind of vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Your vision is blurred, and you're having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. Um, let's reconstruct the movement. The tire tracks were left here by an oh. unknown event that took place some days ago. It's a message, written in the language of burnt rubber. Started there, crashed, and then reversed back, and then turned. Down. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started there, and then accelerated straight into the fence, left a hole big enough for the Franco Nigerian cavalry, according to the cafeteria manager. Why that pang of guilt again? The hole in this fence doesn't look that huge. Did I do that? I think I did that. Damn bartender. The hole is not that impressive. Okay, what happened next? The driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building, before heading south. Must have been in a hurry. A car drove through the fence. Is this connected to the case? I'm not sure. There are plenty of traffic accidents waiting to happen in Martinez, with the jam right here on the roundabout. I would keep them separate. You could follow the track south. There seems to be a canal there. See where they went, if you find the time. Car drove through the fence. You are correct. This is a rather motor carriage friendly <laughs> city. Somehow that makes you feel scared. You don't know why. I think I got it. All right, let's see. There's gotta be a way to go around and get to her on the other side. I did it before, I just need to remember how to do it again. Let's go back inside the Whirling Rex. Whoa, there's a lot more people hanging out here. What's going on? Damn. Look at all these folks. Hey. <laughs> Hi guys. Did I already talk to you? I think I talked to you in the last episode. It's all about money, you know? Okay, yeah. <laughs> you don't say anything. Hey, girl. Hello again, sweetie. How'd you like to roll with me? Whatever do you mean? I want you to be my wheelchair <laughs> partnering, fighting crime, riddling backyards of corpses, nothing, sequence killers, nothing. I was thinking of lyrics to a song. Wanna roll with me? <laughs> ah, yes. Probably roll with me by the Fletchers. People often quote the Fletchers at me. Morel says it's my theme song. <laughs> I I really want to say this. Sweetie needs money. Do sweeties get money? Oh, sweetie, I heard your conversation with the manager about your uh, financial troubles. When do you get your next paycheck? If she could. This woman would feed and clothe you and every other sad, lost person on this earth. Oh no, I feel so bad. Oh, tug on our heartstrings. This cannot be retried. What is a paycheck? I haven't seen any paychecks. You must be joking. Although <laughs> our pay does sometimes feel like a joke. 
<laughs> it's not easy to assert your right to a decent living wage when you don't have a strong union behind you. Maybe you should talk to Everard, the union leader. Interesting idea. This Everard sounds powerful. Maybe you can wrangle some coins out of his pocket. As much as I want to do this, I'm not because I don't want to... Oh, no, I'm so sorry I don't have money for you. If, if there's anything else I can do for you, just ask. Yeah. Because she's she's just a little lady and I'm not going to steal money from her. God. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know who I am. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. Her eyes follow you. Follow your movements with some concern. I drank so hard I forgot literally everything. I hope you're right. I hope it's not too bad. Yeah, blowing this whole thing out of proportion. Forget I said anything. I forgot literally everything. Oh my. You know where we are, right? The Whirling and Rags cafeteria. It was on my keys. We're in Revachol. I don't know. Some seedy hotel? A war zone at the edge of the world. We're dead, haunting each other. We're ghosts. And we're in Revachol. That's right. In a hostel called the Whirling and Rags, to be precise. Honestly, I don't know diddly squat about Rubbishul. What kind of place is this? All I noticed that Rubbishul used to be really cool in the 30s. Rubbishul is the disgraced capital of the world. Uh, used to be cool. The new disco dancing. It seems like a lifetime ago. Her eyes are filled with a light reflected off those gilded years. But the city seemed f when the city seemed full of possibilities. Much has changed, but it is still the most beautiful city in the world. A rare, rare jewel, jewel oh. set in the sand between the pines. Everyone says so, even foreigners. I don't know why I thought it was my turn to speak. There's a pause as she studies your expression. You see, you must look quite lost. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? It's the spring of, of 51. Sure, it's the year 973. All I know is we are approaching the end times. It's a bad year in my late 40s or 50s. I don't know how old I am. It's the spring of 50. That's right, dear. How splendid. <laughs> Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. She's so cute. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. I can tell that this is taxing oh, for wow. you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Uh, we are governed by intelligent machines that perform calculations to determine the freest market. Everyone hustles and grinds like a badass visionary. Um, some kind of democracy, maybe? Nope. Sadly not. Revachol is what's called a zone of control. Under an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have no government of our own, and what democracy we have is... Market driven. Meaning, buying is voting. If there's no government, how come there are cops? I don't even know what to say. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> how come there are cops? Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. All right. She's scared now. Oh no. She's realized you really are brain damaged. What is this revolution you mentioned? How did I do? Uh, you could tell me more. Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. She turns to the lieutenant. No. I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Of course. Then, I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though, I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. <laughs> I've gotta get going now. Uh, so she thinks I'm pretty messed up, which is probably accurate. I didn't mean to scare you. Get a reality lowdown. You have no idea where you are. I mean, I encourage you to ask others to explain the world to you in greater detail. Perhaps try a rich person? Rich people are educated. Okay. Sure. Honestly, 
This episode's gonna be so long, but I really don't care. <laughs> I just wanna keep playing. Hey, dude. Uh, I don't think there's anything we can do here. Is there anything new with you, Gart? Can I help you? Gart, I saw another thing at the warning. Another thing? Great. I love those. I saw a sign that said the mess hall is reserved for the Union. Yes, not the whole damn Union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. He tosses his head in disdain. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. <laughs> he hates the Union but grudgingly recognizes its power over him. So he's directing his frustration at you instead. Retaliate. <laughs> Let it go, you're above gratuitous baiting. <laughs> we should find out who this Lord faction is occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative, and we need info. Lieutenant gives you a meaningful nod. How do we find them? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even men on strike. You glance at the clock on the wall behind the manager. Huh. It's after 1600. The sign said reserved starting at 1600. Why isn't anyone in the mess hall? Hold your peace. Best not to nitpick. Uh, no, I'd nitpick. Good question. He turns to the cafeteria manager. They're probably getting drunk or protesting something somewhere. Or laying low after the, <laughs> you know, lynching. Why is that? They probably fucking killed that guy or something, and that's why. Hmm. I have a feeling we'll make their acquaintance sooner or later. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Bye. I don't want a drink. It's a bad idea. I love this variation. It's so good. Of course I can't hear it anymore. Damn it. The door is Hello? closed. Okay. Oh. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray. Light it up and smoke the living shit out of it. Am I a smoker? Who knows what you are? <clears throat> a monster. A murderer. The gnome of Jeroma, you feel like a smoker, especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub, still smoldering deliciously. But she broke it at the filter, I can't smoke that. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that, a carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied, then smoke them all. The idea seems to make your neck oh. expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. It's the first time the tie has spoken to like me. Like a cat rubbing itself against its owner's calves. A cat that wants you to smoke a lot. <laughs> or you could not do that. No one is making you. Yes, I should do that. I should enthusiastically do that. I should not not do that. I'll make it priority one. Well, I'll think about it. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> I'll think about it. Good. Thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Make sure you think about juicy sticks of tobacco all the time, though. It doesn't count if it's not all the time. And when you're done thinking about them, graduate to getting them. Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses. I don't think it does. Smoking is not good for you people. PSA, don't smoke. <laughs> I, just, I just saw this kind green apple pen. A pen with a green ape head on... Oh, oh, I kept reading it as apple pen. Okay, sorry. <laughs> kind green ape pen. A pen with a green ape head on one end. The, the ape has its has closed its eyes, a kind expression adorning its face. It seems to be meditating. 
That is adorable. Look how many freaking tasks I have. I've barely done anything. Oh my god. Actually, you know what I just remembered? Let's equip that bag. There we go. Again, I'm so sorry for any background noise. Okay. Let's pick up these bottles. I can't pick up that one. The one in the middle. Okay, cool. I got some empty bottles. Hi. Oh. <laughs> that was a bottle. Am I done talking to you? In a deep slumber. Steal the dock worker's ID. Oh. That would be really useful. Should I try it? Uh, no, let's leave. Okay, let's leave for now. There's something else I want to do, I just can't remember. All right, let's see. So, there are these dudes over here I wanted to give the, the ball to. Yeah. These guys playing the game. Life <laughs> doesn't need to be a struggle. He covers his mouth to hide a burp. <laughs> the noise he made. I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to Angry Hog Rene first. Okay. Hi. Can you please stop whining for one second and let me take this shot? Okay. Rene, you are the angriest man in the world. Better observe them first. Moment of your time, fellows. Don't get involved in the game. Better observe them first. See? Your munching and complaining have ruined my concentration. The man throws a metal ball towards a smaller wooden ball in the stand, missing it by a meter. Ah, mon dieu. The pain in my back is unbearable. I can't even say if it's in my back or hip anymore. Feels like it's in both. He tries to measure the I throw. I hope you pass out from it, you goddamn jellyfish. Men like you are the reason this nation is sinking. Standing tall and proud, he looks at his partner with disgust. Trying to throw something as close to a predetermined point as possible. Measuring. This must be the age-old game of Patank. Patank. Shush. Ignore them. They don't know what they're doing. They're old. You are letting down yourself and the team. Get in the damn game already. I'm on it, coach. Eyes on the ball, Dinky Winky. Oh shit, it lowered my... <laughs> okay. Let's just not get involved in the game. A uh, moment of your time. Sure, officer. I am running. Rene Arno, and my specially abled partner here is Gaston Martin. How can we help you? The man in the uniform stands before you tall and proud. Do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of whirling in rags? He seemed to be playing in a crater. <laughs> I saw the statue of Philippe... Philippe the third near the roundabout. Thank you for your time. <laughs> You're saying about the hangman. Unfortunately, I don't. And like most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement, but this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez, the union is the law, so can you really blame them? But you don't have a problem with cops? Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. What about policewomen? I'm confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork and other administrative duties. Not to mention keeping the station tidy and the men fed and happy. <laughs> there are no duties the RCM women couldn't carry out. I could. I try to avoid voicing opinions on controversial matters. Let's just drop it. There are no duties the RCM women couldn't carry out. But you must agree that nature in her infinite wisdom has made men more fit to perform certain more challenging tasks, don't you, officer? I mean, as far as physical labor goes, sure. I don't think there's any evolutionary 
inequality at play here. Um, but as a, as a woman, I feel like I can speak on this a little bit. I just feel like he's got a point. Like there are some challenging tasks as far as physical labor that women are just. I mean, generally speaking, that's not always the case, obviously, but women aren't typically as strong as men physically. <laughs> I'm trying to say this in the least controversial way I possibly can. So yes, I guess that's true. There's no reason to even feel bad about that. It's just the way of the animal kingdom. You seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Was it made by a sea monster rising from the depths? Was there an earthquake here? Does it have anything to do with at all with the bullet holes I've been seeing around? Do you know what created it? Uh... Anything to do with the bullet holes? Yes. It was left by heavy artillery fire. Okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy art artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Wait, who are the communards again? Did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. He adds, squeezing a bull in his fist. <laughs> Should have fought dirty. Like they did with this suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannons simply weren't big enough. <laughs> I understand I'd bomb this place, too. Why show them here in Martinez? You should have chosen a place away from people and buildings. This place is the damn beachhead, son. They had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. Points to the northeast. Deathblow sounds grim. Not thoughtfully and look northeast. Shake your head and look down at the crater. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got all René going there. Like he isn't hangry enough already. <laughs> Hold on, the coalition? Is that why everything is so bombed out? Ah, that explains the water damage. Is that why everything is so bombed out? Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. There's a strange gleam in his eyes. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. This guy's voice. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? Thinking men have opinions on these things. Uh... <laughs> That's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for the hard working class to take over. Foreign powers cleaned up our mess and now they rule us. Shake your head in shame. This coalition seems quite capable, actually. Commies just don't understand how money works. Nothing. I don't think. I just do. Uh, the coalition seems quite capable, actually. <laughs> They're not. And I'm sorry it had to eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains. He takes a deep breath. I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned through Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Fuisel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world 
was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. You better not be talking about disco. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. What exactly is the suzerain? The suzerain is the king. Has everyone forgotten already? <sighs> they forgotten already. Soon, they will forget everything. Him too. Then he chooses anger over melancholy. It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the filth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Okay. <laughs> this is about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud. Thank you for your time. Okay. <laughs> that went a lot. Bleh. That went on a lot longer than I was anticipating it to. My bad. Okay, I'm gonna leave this episode off here. This episode was very, very long, and I was kind of planning on it to be in the first place, but still, I feel like I didn't do very much. I'm so sorry. I don't, I don't know what's going on with me. I don't know what to do in this game half the time. Um, still getting used to everything, I think, but overall, again, this game is just so much fun. I did mess up quite a few things this episode, and I'm so sorry. I messed up that thing with Kuno again. I'm pretty sure that girl is who took the firearm, or my gun, that I sold to the guy. But we will see. I think eventually we'll get something out of her. She she has, She's hiding something. She hates cops, but she stole the gun, I think. I'm like 99% sure of that. Either way, I tried to branch out a little more in my dialogue options this episode. I tried to be a little weirder. But at the same time, I still want to play how I want to play, and I hope you guys are understanding of that. Um, I really appreciate everyone's support on this episode, or on the series as a whole. Like I keep saying, the series is going to be pretty long because I really don't know what I'm doing. But I'm hoping to get to the bottom of things, and hopefully, I think a new day will be starting soon so we can get some more stuff done, I think. If you enjoyed, leave a like or subscribe if you're new, because I'd really love to have you stick around and watch me play some video games. And hang out with me. Yeah. I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.